Hey everyone, Nick from Accounting Add-ons here. And in this video, I'll show you how you can create a simple net profit actual versus budget versus forecast chart using zero data in Power BI. We'll use our data link as the means to download the data directly into Power BI. Now, other than creating the chart, the main aim is to showcase the forecast measures that highlights how you can combine data from multiple tables into a single measure. And we'll also show you how you can cap values to not extend past a certain point in your chart. Now let's get into it. The first step will be to download and shape the zero data. So we'll jump to OData link and we'll copy our OData feed URL. And we'll return to Power BI and we'll go get data from OData feed. And we'll paste the URL in. We'll click OK. And then we'll select the endpoints that we want to download. There's going to be three. We're interested in the dates table. We're interested in the profit and loss by month, as well as the budget summary by month. And we'll click transform data. Now to edit the budget summary by month, the first thing we'll do is we'll click on the little gear symbol and we'll change the financial year to 2022. We'll then click OK. We'll expand the lines field and we'll make sure we include the account ID, the account name and the amounts and we make sure we untick the use original column. We'll click OK and we'll expand the amounts column and do the same to expand the date and the amount. Now there's a few fields we're not interested in in this table. We'll remove the updated date UTC and we'll remove the data file. And lastly, we'll go to the amounts column and we'll filter to exclude nulls and zeros because they have no material impact to the chart. And that's it for the budget summary by month. Now the profit and loss by month is edited pretty much the same way. We'll go to profit and loss by month, we'll invoke the function, and we want to run it for 2022, and we'll click OK. We'll go to the lines table, and we'll select the same fields, account ID, account name, and amounts. And we'll go to the amounts column and we'll expand it for the date and the amount. Now we're not interested in the updated date UTC, standard layout payments only. We'll keep the financial year, we'll remove the data file. And that table is very similar to what we've produced for the budget summary. Lastly, we'll filter the amounts to remove nulls and zeros as well. We'll click OK. And that's it for the profit and loss by month. And finally, we'll need to edit the dates endpoint. We'll go to the display string and we'll expand it to only include MM year year as the display field. We'll remove calendar month, calendar year and financial month. And we'll filter the financial year to be equals to 2022. Now, one last thing we'll need to do will be to actually add a custom field to control the toggle between the actual data and the forecast data. And to do that, we'll first add a new parameter and we'll call it var forecast date. We'll set it to a date and we'll first enter the 1st of October 2022 as its default value. Once we've done that, we can return back to the dates endpoint. We'll add a column custom column and we'll call it is actual forecast and we'll set the value to be an if statement where the date is less than the var forecast date then we'll return the word actual and if it's greater we'll return the word forecast once we've done that we can click OK and we can click home, close and apply, and we finished editing our data. Now to confirm the dates toggle is working, we'll go to the data tab and select the dates endpoint. And if we scroll, we'll notice the is actual forecast is all set to actual. If we go to the home tab and choose transform data edit parameters, we'll change the date to be the 1st of October 2021 and click OK. If we apply our changes, and now if we scroll, we'll notice that it'll go from actual all the way to September, and then it'll say the word forecast onwards. So this confirms that the toggle is actually taking place correctly. So now we're ready to start creating the measures. 
Now in order to build our measures, we'll need to add relationships between all three tables. And to do that, we'll go to Modeling, Manage Relationships, and we'll get to the Relationship screen. We'll click New. We'll pick our first table, which will be the Budget Summary by Month. We'll select the Date field, and then we'll pull the Dates table and select the Date field. And we need to make sure it's set to Many to One. Many budget entries are linked to a single date. We'll click OK, and we'll do the same process for the profit and loss by month. And this allows Power BI to navigate through the data, but more importantly, allows us to build DAX formulas that will allow us to navigate through the data. We'll click Close, and now we can create our DAX measures. Now that we've got the data in Power BI, the next thing we'll do is add a skeleton for our chart. So we'll add a line and clustered column chart, which will expand to fill the whole area. We'll use the month, month, year, year as the x-axis. And we'll use both the amount of the profit and loss as a column y-axis and the amount of the budget as another column y-axis. Finally, we'll add the date of the dates table as a tooltip so that we can actually sort by this earliest date. So we'll sort by the earliest date and then that ensures that our columns are in the correct order. So at the moment, what we've got is a bar chart that compares actual versus budget in light blue and dark blue. And we'll also do a few more edits to get the chart looking just right. And the last step we'll do is to filter both the profit and loss and the budget values to only include net profit. To do that, we'll drag and drop the account name onto our filters. We'll make sure it's set to require single selection and we'll choose only the net profit value in both those columns. Now that we've done this, it's time to create our measures. The first measures we'll create will be to convert the actuals and budget values into year-to-date values. Now to do that, I'll right-click profit and loss by month and choose new measure. And my first measure will be called actual amount. And it'll be a straight calculate sum of the profit and loss amount. Now I'll do the same thing for the budget values. And I'll call it budget amount. And again, it'll be a straight calculate sum of the budget amount. Now these measures are essentially almost the same as the amount one, but they're slightly easier to use and they're named correctly. So that's the first step. Now for our year-to-date measures, we'll right-click and do new measure. And the first one will be called actual amount YTD and it'll be using the total year-to-date function. We'll use the profit and loss actual amount as the amount value. We'll use the date, square bracket date, as our date column. We'll make sure we use all dates to be able to do it. And we'll set the end of the financial year to be March 31st. And that's because we're in a New Zealand data file that goes April to March. We'll do the exact same process for the budget ones. So budget amount YTD, total year to date. It'll use the budget amount column. It'll use the dates date field. It'll use all dates and also set the March 31st. Now that we've done that, we can actually replace these two values with our year-to-date values, just to have a look to see what it looks like. Now importantly, we don't want all these bars. 
We want the actuals to go up to a certain point in time, and we want the budget to continue on from that point in time. And that's going to be based on the actual parameter that we've entered in Power Query. Now to do that, what we'll do is we'll add a new capped measure. So we'll right click and create a new measure. And we'll call this measure actual amount year to date capped. Now this measure will be a calculate of our profit and loss year to date measure but it'll be filtered to only show the dates whose date is actual forecast is set to actual. If I do that, that's our measure created. And I can then replace the actual amount year to date with this new measure. And you can actually see it goes up to a certain point in time. Now we'll want to do the same thing for the budget. So we'll right click new measure and we'll enter budget amount year to date capped and it'll be pretty much the same formula. A calculate function that looks at the budget's year to date amount that filters it based on the dates table where the dates is actual forecast is set to forecast in this case. If we do that, we can drag that column in, remove the old one, and you can actually see it's capping the values based on the parameters. Now to do our forecast measures will be fairly similar. We'll right click on the profit and loss and create a new measure and we'll call this one forecast amount. Now this forecast amount will be equal to a calculate function. That'll do two things. It'll grab the profit and loss amount value, but it'll filter it based on the dates whose dates is actual forecast is set to actual. And it'll add another calculate function which will grab the budget amount in this case, but it'll filter it based on the dates where the dates is for actual forecast is set to forecast. So it concatenates the two values, but in effect what it's grabbing is the profit and loss amount for the actual dates and the budget amount for the forecast dates. That's our first measure. And if we were to drag that in and have a look at it, you can actually see it's got a combination of actuals and forecasts. Now we'll remove that. What we'll now want to do is turn this into a year-to-date measure. So we'll add a forecast amount year-to-date. And that'll use the same total year-to-date function we've used before. It'll use the forecast amount, the date's date, all dates and will be set to March 31st. Once we type that in, we can drag that as a line Y axis instead, and you can actually see that's the forecast value made up of actual values and budget values as it progresses. Now to drive this chart, there's basically two steps. The first step is under transform data and edit parameters, we would enter and change the forecast date, for instance, 1st of June 21. Once we've done that, we can click on the refresh button, which will pull all the latest information out of zero based on this new forecast date. And once done, the chart's updated. And it's that simple to actually change how it operates. Now to easily understand the chart, when the orange line is below the bars, it means you're less profitable than what you budgeted. But when the orange line is above the bars, it means you're more profitable. So that brings us to the end of the video, showing you how you can actually create a net profit, actual versus budget versus forecast chart in Power BI using zero data and O data link. I hope you found this interesting and I'll catch you next time. Take care.